said this, but he he goes, they're the scumbags of the sea. You'll want to be where the dangers are far. You'll want to see, want to see people escaping, running away from those, what do you call them? Oh. Monsters. Drowning the prey, you won't get too far. Escaping and hiding. Escaping from a... What's that word again? Away from the grasp, away from the spell, away from the clutches from my So, uh, what did you think of my parody song? Out of that world. Yeah, I'm not a singer, but this, I thought it would be a fun joke. Y'all, if it's terrible, laugh with me, not at me, please. But anyway, so y'all wanted mermaids, so you're going to be getting some mermaids, okay? And we're going to be talking about mermaids. Now the question is, expectation versus reality. Which is right? Well, I'm going to tell you. But, you know, I'm going to give the background information first. And just so you know, I do my channeling first before I go and do any research because I want to make sure, you know, I'm channeling information and it's coming from spirit and not because my brain's smart. And, you know, if I know things ahead of time, it could get in the way, the ego gets in the way. And then it's kind of like, was it something that I learned and I'm remembering it? Or is it because spirit told me, you know? You know. Okay. So background information. So in mythology, you know, sirens and mermaids are often depicted as enchanting creatures that captivate the imagination with their beauty and allure. But I'm going to, you know, talk about sirens first and then mermaids. But in ancient Greek mythology, sirens were dangerous yet intriguing creatures who resided on rocky islands and lured sailors with their enchanting songs. These songs were said to be so irresistible that sailors would become mesmerized and steer their boats or ships towards the sirens, ultimately leading to their doom, aka shipwreck. Bada boom, bada bing. But the thing that I found interesting in the research, right, was that before Christianity, before Christianity, they were um, depicted as more bird-like, and they had, like, the head of a female, like, human, and then the body of a bird. Now, you know, there's speculation that they got that from the Egyptians, because in between, you know, Africa and Greece is the Mediterranean Sea, and that was a common area for trade, right? And so it would make sense how each cultures were spread and, you know, Egyptian cultures were spread and it's possible that's how they got that idea. Now, after and during and after Christianity, that's when, you know, it started to become more fish-like and become more uh, mermaidy like which I find very interesting. Um, why do you think that change was made? I know I have a suspicion and I think it has to do with Christians of that time trying to convert people and pretty much demonizing any religion that didn't follow what they wanted, you know? Because you know how they did a lot of murder in the... Uh, it was the Crusades, and they were trying to get rid of, like, the pagans and all that stuff. So I'm wondering, through the demolish of other religions and cultures, if that's how that came to be. But, guys, let me know what you think. But so, anyway, mermaids on the other hand, and you have mermen, merfolk, people. They're within the same species, pretty much. The difference between mermaid and mermen, one's female, one's a man or male. But yeah, 
So they have their roots in various mythologies around the world. They are typically portrayed as half human and half fish, with the upper body resembling that of a human and the lower body being a fish tail. In many tales, mermaids were believed to possess immense beauty and often appear to sailors or fishermen, sometimes even saving them from danger or guiding them to safety. The folklore surrounding sirens and mermaids has been shaped over centuries, with stories varying from culture to culture. They have been depicted as both benevolent and malevolent beings embodying the duality of their nature. Some tales portray them as seductive temptresses, while others depict them as gentle, otherworldly beings with a deep connection to the sea. We're going to get into that because, you know, things got a little crazy in the information. And again, take what I say with a grain of salt. This is based off of my perception. Um... Not all mediums are going to channel the same thing, or if they do channel the same thing, their interpretations are going to vary. So guys, it's, it's up to you whether or not you believe what, like what I say. If you agree, cool. If you don't agree, cool, you know, but anyway, so from beautiful luring redheaded mermaids adorned in metallic green scales and jewelry to deranged hag-like seaweed covered malevolent monsters, the real question is, what are mermaids and sirens actually like? Is there some truth to the myths and legends that have been spreading throughout the various cultures since the dawn of man? Well, I finally got some answers, okay? Okay. Through the three hours of the meditation and channeling that I've done, Spirit was able to relay some information to me that I was able to funnel through automatic writing, which... If you don't know what automatic writing is, it's pretty much like letting, it's it's pretty much not thinking and just going with the flow with writing. Um, the information I had received is unlike anything I've ever heard from other mediums and other people of this field. Because this channel was all over the place since I had to initially start at noon, um, yesterday technically, within 20 minutes I'd fallen asleep and had astral projected to where my guides had other plans for me first. I still had gotten a page's worth of information, but it still made the information a bit uh, unorganized. However, during the second round, things became clear and I was able to become caffeinated. (laughs) So I didn't fall asleep that time. Anyway, from the information I received, I learned that similar to nature spirits and elementals above water, Mermaids have similar categories and fit into multiple ones. This is due to the perception of them and how other cultures label these beings. Like shadow figures, many types of entities can be seen as shadows. This is the same concept for mermaids, where you have entities of different species from a distance or through the lack of knowledge or experience, perception, what have you. They can be perceived as mermaids, manatees, selkies, and other exotic fish from, you know, remote locations can take on mermaid or siren qualities. I also suspect that because there are so many different types of ocean spirits, people kind of just lump them all together under one or two names, such as mermaid or siren. Just like how we have vast amounts of entities and spirits on land, the same goes for those, the ones in the sea. And the same basic principles apply, like how plant and animal deva exist on land, same applies for the ones in the oceans. All organisms have their own spirit acquainted with them, because remember, what happens on the physical must be balanced in energy on the metaphysical. Pretty much any and all spirits and entities that we have above land can exist in or around water. Not to mention the ones that do exist on the earth realms can exist at any moment in time. How? Spirits or entities are not bound by time. This is a man-made construct of the 3D and on the astral realms and other dimensions. It doesn't exist. What does that mean? Well, because of this, think about our space existing in layers with everything, past, present, and future, happening all at the same time. The way spirits showed me past events were in layers stacked on top of each other. Land and or continents, rivers, lakes, oceans, mountains, etc. have moved around this planet for millions of years as tectonic plate shift, erosion occurs, flooding overtakes areas, droughts dry out certain areas, etc. With that being said, nothing stays put in 
change is inevitable. When I go to certain locations and see events that have happened over thousands and sometimes millions of years ago, some locations that are on land and above sea level, I'm seeing like aquatic animals just floating around living their best life. And that's because it's like those areas back then in that time were not above sea level. They were underwater. So that's how some of these realms and dimensions are. If you like the science of realms and dimensions, I highly recommend listening to the episode of the Lights of Midnight podcast called Frequency, Duality, and Dimensions, an Exploration into the Diversity of the Spiritual Realms, where Chas, aka Luminary Luna Beams, and I have our reading rainbow moments, <laughs> and we go and deep dive into the science of how this stuff is possible. Anyway, with these realms and dimensions being overlaid and stacked on top of one another, when there is a breakdown in the energy systems, energy grids, whatever you want to call them, where the veil is thinner and energy starts bleeding into other realms, this is how some of these sightings occur, especially with those spirits not normally present in our realm. It's the same way Bigfoot or Sasquatch, whatever you want to call them, can be seen, which is kind of fun to think about. Okay, so for a better understanding, I separated these entities into categories. So you know how I was talking about shadow people and how many entities can make themselves look like shadows and then people think, oh, it's a shadow person. <laughs> um, same principle, but I kind of divided up two possibilities of what people could be seeing, okay? So the first one is Oceanic Deva. So they're pretty much caretakers of the sea. They protect oceanic plants and animals, nature, conservationists. They're light and airy and energy, typically benevolent. So every animal, every plant has their own spirit attached to it, right? We have our body and then we have our spirit body. Same thing applies to them. And like I said, they're typically benevolent. Then you have the elementals. Now the elementals, holy macaroni. I wish I knew more about elementals. It's so hard to just cover just like one type of elemental in just one video. We'd be here for hours because there are so many types of elementals, but to name a few that are similar and they're oceanic, we have the undine. I'm probably saying it wrong and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have the undine or undine the Nereids, I hope I'm saying that right, and then you got the Mermaids. They're all type of elemental. They're different. They're all different. But they are, they are a mixed bag in terms of like level of vibration, so their scale of whether or not they're good or bad, it's a mixed bag. You're going to have some malevolent, benevolent, neutral, like it's, it's very similar to the Fae, okay? That's how I kind of equate it. So they're similar to the Fae. You have the Seelie Court and the Unseelie Court with the Fae. So like I said, good and bad. But in the ocean. <laughs> These spirits dwell within their own realms for the most part. And the Oceanic Deva, I mean, if you're somebody that is clairvoyant and or can feel different energies and just is very well aware of all the different spirits, you're more likely to see them than just like your average Joe sailor, you know? But um, for me, I am an earth sign, and so I can see a lot of the nature spirits, right? I have a close bond with them. Um, I haven't personally, like, had a full-on astral experience with any of the aquatic ones, other than I've had an experience with a whale spirit, I've had, exp I did have a flash of a mermaid while I was doing this in my meditation, but I didn't physically meet one. So just, just throwing that out there. Um, like I said, all this information is coming from my spirit guide. Um, what else? What have I seen? Oh, the parasitic ones, the parasitic, uh, ocean entities. <laughs> yeah, they're their own thing and we'll get to that. 
So sirens, I put sirens in their own category because I don't know too much about them and when I was channeling, I didn't get too much information. Hell, I didn't get much information about them at all because when I was talking to my guides, it was kind of hard to like separate out the different kinds and put them into categories. And honestly, it could take a lifetime just to get even a little bit of information on these things. But from the research I did, um, again, they're more bird-like than fish with the head of a female person and the body of a bird. Um, sirens were confused with mermaids. Can perhaps be put in the thought form category, but I honestly don't know enough about them to say anything for sure. Now, thought forms. This is where it gets freaky deaky because thought forms, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> we could do just a series on friggin' thought forms. So where myths and legends created a version of these beings, some are poltergeists of the sea. Fractals of negative energy from catastrophic events, tragedies, low vibrational people, etc. Some look like Frankenstein or chimera beings, where they look like a bunch of creatures put together to create one negative entity. That's where I suspect sirens fall, like the bird ones that were mentioned in the folklore. But again, hard to tell. Um, yeah. Some look like actual merfolk or sirens, both the fish kind and the bird kind. Some look like sea hags, depending on the energy and perception of the person or people who created the thought form in the first place. They are capable of shape-shifting and switching around due to their fractal nature. It is like the collection of negative energy, which could be clusters of different fractals, which is how they can switch to different forms. Some have developed their own consciousness, while some have not. And they're typically negative. Because it's a collection of negative energy. Because energy is more dense, right? Because when energy is more dense, it sticks around. And it's easier to, you know, turn into a cluster fuck. Okay. And then you have the earthbound spirits. So, these guys like to mess with people. Now, I'm not talking about all earthbound spirits. I'm just talking about the ones that are, like, messing with the sailors and, um, you know, trying to evoke a negative response, right? Because, you know, you have earthbound spirits on land, normal ones. And, again, earthbound spirits vary in the level of vibration. So you can have, like, harmless ones that are just like chilling Roman, right? With intentions that are not malevolent, right? But then you can have the ones that are like mischievous, negative, evil, demonized, and so on. So again, it's a scale. But Spirit was telling me that there are some earthbound spirits that like to mess around and shapeshift into whatever they want and to pretty much scare people. <laughs> It is so messed up. Thought forms are very similar too, but anyway. <laughs> I was just like, what? Really? Then you have parasites. Those that attach and feed off the host off of their aura and body energy systems. They're usually negative, malevolent, you know. Um, and they tend to be long-lasting attachments that feed off of trauma and anchor themselves using trauma and trauma is something that I talk about a lot on my channel then we have demons now listen when I talk about these things there's no judgment I'm just saying I'm just talking about how they are okay but you know demons these malevolent entities that dwell in the oceanic hellscape that mostly appear from sorcery or black magic, curses and or hexes, typically when a demon is at play, they were already hanging around the person before they went to the sea and are not of the sea. That is not to say that there aren't oceanic demon entities. There are, and there's a main, like, popular one, I'm not gonna say the name, y'all already know who it is, but I ain't gonna say it, I ain't gonna say it. 
But, um, yeah. Do -do 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 -do. But I will say the demon ones are very rare and very unlikely to encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, yeah. But these guys are typically evil. Okay. So here's some more information. More about the channel itself. Okay. So when I was first looking for spirits or guides with the knowledge I was in search of, I came across an old man spirit that looked to be in his 70s and he gave me old sailor vibes and he had a potty mouth and very grumpy, very grumpy. I asked him about mermaids and I kind of joked like, so are they like the Disney movie ones? And I kid you not, and I quote, this is what he said. <laughs> I can't believe he said this, but he, he goes, they're the scumbags of the sea. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I was, I was, okay guys, I was laughing so hard. He was just like very grumpy and like, get off my lawn type energy. And he's like, they're the scumbags of the sea. So pissed off. And I think either he has encountered one or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how, why he knows this, but that's what he said to me. And I was just die in laughing and then I fell asleep and yeah they're the scumbags of the sea anyway so during round two my guide helped me out which was helpful because they energized me instead of putting me to sleep but um also it helped that I was caffeinated they told me that like all beings they come in all shapes and sizes along with their personality and the level of goodness not sure how else to call it or refer to it. Within the negative types, in reference to the ones I mentioned earlier in the different categories, they have their own way of getting what they want, aka food through negative energy. Like how you have hauntings on land, you have hauntings at sea, though there aren't as many as there are on land because there aren't as many people out at sea as there are on land. However, coasts can be great hotspots for them, especially coastal towns and cities, but also popular trading routes that boats often travel. These entities are looking for the negative energy to feed off of and can produce hauntings where there is high traffic of people. This includes ships, coastlines, islands, etc. They can oppress people just like other negative entities through nightmares, sleep paralysis, PK manifestation, psychic or energy attacks, etc. They can even influence and possess the living, especially the really especially the really malevolent entities. The whole point is to cause a negative response, whether that's through fear or manipulating a person to elicit a negative emotion, thought or action. Um, I made a chart, as you know, in the empath video, and I made this negative energy food wheel thing. If you wanna see the chart, you can either go back to the video or join my Patreon for a dollar and download it and use it and see it. I don't know. It's up to y'all. So yeah, you can refer to those if you want. Sometimes that action may involve a person to unalive themselves through influence or possession or unaliving other people. Again, same stuff, same scenarios that happen on land, but then like on water. From what my guides told me, the easiest thing and the most common thing these spirits do to elicit a negative response, especially sailors or those who travel by sea, is cause paranoia, sleep paralysis, and nightmares. It's less energy output on the entity's end and yields good results. Like how some malevolent entities like demons can hypnotize with their eyes. Some of these mermaid looking things can do that, but also use sound frequencies to entrap a person into sleep paralysis while they siphon energy and that could be like part of where like the whole siren thing came from um anyway as stated previously some of these entities can shapeshift into whatever they want like how you have some malevolent entities such as demons that can shapeshift into children to lower a person's guard you can have entities that can shapeshift into beautiful women 
It's to bring a person's guard down and catch them when they least expect it. They can do this through illusion and during a dream or astral realm state. So those at risk of being affected by these types of entities or any type of negative entity for that matter, typically somebody that is very low in vibration or with poor mental health usually are going to be affected. Trauma, trauma, you know, attracts negative shit. And to be honest, who don't have trauma these days? We're just like a freaking buffet. That's why it's very important to understand how to protect yourself and make sure you're good spiritually so you don't become a meal for these entities. And I'm not going to lie, as a medium, you know, I have entities that'll just come into my house randomly, though I will say it's been better because I made friends with the Dryan outside. No, but seriously, I've been getting really good with, you know, sealing up and putting up barriers so things can't come in. And sometimes that's what you gotta do. You gotta work on yourself, heal your traumas, heal yourself, work on your mental health, work on your physical health, make yourself strong in mind, body, and spirit. And when you do this, you know, it makes it hard for these things to latch on or stay latched on. So that's why it's important to take care of yourself. But as long as you do those things, you're gonna be fine. It's not, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're gonna be fine whether you're on in the sea or on land, you know, it's fine. <laughs> you guys will be fine. I know some people get worried, um, but no, seriously, there's there's always a solution there's always a light at the end of the tunnel okay everything's fine but yeah if you have any uh questions comments concerns with what i said so far please let me know in the comment section down below i know some of the stuff i say seems crazy trust me i question it on a daily basis um yeah it's fine but yeah, I'm going to end the video here because that's all I got for the channel. It was a long freaking channel and I'm tired. <laughs> I am. I'm not going to lie. It is 4.30 a.m. right now <laughs> as I film this video. But anyway, guys, I hope at least, you know, you got some entertainment out of this video and it quelled, quenched your thirst for for your curiosity. I don't know. I can't English. So yeah, anyway, pff. thanks again for watching and welcome to all the new subscribers. You guys are awesome and thank you for your support. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Peace. If you guys like these types of videos, I highly recommend you go and watch the Dryads video if you haven't already. I pretty much share my experiences with them and it's a fun time. <laughs>